And hi. All right, let's uh, make an object and rig it. So here I've got a cube. Let's go into edit mode and add like a monkey and move up like this much. All right, there you go. Perfect. Best model. Now I'll make some vertex groups. Uh, cube. Monkey. Just add the monkey to the thing and the cube to the other one. Let's add an armature. Uh, I need another bone, so I'll add that and move it up. No, control L because I want the whole bone. Move it up. Uh, three meters, sure, whatever. So now I've got two bones. Uh, let's name this guy cube so that it matches the name of the vertex group that we made earlier and this guy monkey. And now uh, let's go into object mode. Let's select my object and... Um, separate these excuse me oh, I hadn't uh, let me, uh, 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 uh. this guy can be cube this guy can be monkey monkey doesn't need the cube vertex group cube doesn't need the monkey vertex group all right uh, the monkey vertex group has everything in here cube is okay in here Cube, monkey, cube, monkey. Uh, so, right. Now let's take this cube and this uh, monkey and click the armature, control P, armature deform. And now when I move the armature, the things move with it. And when I go in pose mode and I move this bone, it moves the cube and I move this bone, it moves the monkey. So far, so good. So let's uh, open a timeline. I oh, know the other one, it doesn't really matter. And let's, oh, right, go into pose mode, select both bones, put, the, put a lock rod down here. Start at frame 10 or whatever. Put a lock rod over here. And then before I do anything else, I actually want to go to item and turn this from Quaternion to XYZ Euler. So that, oh, that killed the rotation keyframe as well. So, Oppa. Oppa. there we go. Um, now, quaternions are great for preventing gimbal lock, but in this case, I want to spin 360 degrees, and that's easier to do <coughs> with XYZ Euler. So let's go to frame 20, RZ360. And put a lock rod there. So now it spins 360 degrees. Uh, if you wanted this to be a continuous animation, you would want to select these two keyframes and go interpolation mode linear. Just so you know. And also you'd want to, uh, for the export of the sequence, oh well, I need to add a model before I can do that. Let's see, I have a game, model, example, slash animation or whatever, reference, collection, this is not a static prop. I don't care about the surface property. Don't care about this. Don't care about that. Scale. I'll scale it up 32 times so you can see it. Material folders. I don't care. It's just going to be no draw or not no draw. Missing texture. Uh, sequences. Because that's not what this tutorial is about. So call it idle. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, frame rate will be the scenes, which makes it 24. Um, because that's default, but you can easily change it. This needs to fuck off, sorry. Uh, and in, uh, where is it? Here. Frame rate. Set it to whatever you want. But if, uh, yeah, you can change it to a custom one here as well. All right, so my animation starts at uh, frame 10 and ends at frame 20. 
which gives us this. Don't really need this, do I? Oopsie. Excuse me, I meant to delete these frames. I'm not allowed to delete this one, apparently. That's fine. Because it doesn't make sense. Well, like, why not just move this here? What am, what, what am I doing? 1 to 11. 0 to 10. What is this? What is this frame? I am thoroughly confused. I'm gonna go figure it out because this is annoying. Maybe I accidentally keyed the armature itself or one of the objects. How odd. No idea what this means. Whatever, I'll just bring one. Right. So it goes zoop. Uh let's make it let's make it spin in a circle. So yeah, interpolation type linear. So in Blender you can actually see a little stutter if you look closely, because this first frame and this last frame are identical. Or well not identical, but zero and three hundred and sixty degrees are you know basically the same thing. Um so a duplicated frame, but for export to source, you actually want that because the only way to get a good loop is to use loop and loop this checkbox for the sequence requires that the first and last frame be identical. So, you know, pro tip. Um, this other stuff I don't care about events is for like sounds. So, a AECL play sound with this can will make a very loud shotgun sound every time the animations or the sequence starts, but I don't want that because that's pretty annoying. Right then, uh, SMD, QC, MDL, HLMV, and there it is. Spin! I don't think it's stuttering. I think it looks correct to me. So yeah, now you've got like a monkey health pickup thing. That's how you do how you export animation from source ups. You don't use actions, but you use the the timeline and just put everything sequentially and set the start and end frames. I don't actually know how to use actions, but if I when I figure that out. Also, by the way, modifiers are allowed. Check this shit out. Um, wow, that's a big old MDL. <clears throat> what was I talking about? When I figure out uh, how to use actions for animation, I'll figure out how to put them in the timeline. Because you can do that. I've seen it done. I just don't remember how. Ah, there it is, fucking hell. Excuse me. Um, that's the MDL. And if you don't use quick MDL, which doesn't support Counter-Strike Global Offensive, I'm pretty sure, then you can't even, then it's even slower. Uh, but yeah, that's just how it is with uh, compiling models. It takes time. But look, subdivided monkey, PogChamp. Right, uh, and that's it for this video. I hope that's somewhat helpful.